Just a continuation on from the previous video where we're learning new ways to record parameter changes within Max for Live using the MTR object. I'm having a bit of trouble recording consistent videos at the moment because where I'm at we're having electrical storms and heavy wind and I'm kind of in a very small batch like scenario and the power keeps surging so my computer is restarting quite often. Um, but it seems to have died down, but there's quite a lot of wind at the moment, so you may hear that in the background. Anyway, so I checked out a few examples of using the MTR object, and I came across this one, which is promising and seems to be doing what I want it to do. Um, so if I was to click record, move some of these around, like so, then click on this, which is define length and stop, and then play. You'll see it kind of moves all continuously in a loop. This is sort of just an output visualization type thing. So this is showing us that all three of these sliders are in fact looping together, which includes the blank space, if you like. So the issue I was having before is these three were all out of sync. So this seems to be doing the job, and I'm, it's, I'm assuming it's because of this define length and stop button, which we weren't using before, we were just using the stop, and we weren't really defining the length. Now this isn't using the transport um, attribute, so, or the sync attribute, no, the transport attribute here. So um, this is set to live by default anyway, but I'm not going to use those because in the DJ Megaset deck strip max patch. I've created my own sort of timing or timekeeping mechanism, and that's for um, controlling all of the looping stuff. So there's CDJ style looping um, mechanisms in that patch, and I can piggyback off that to record the start and the stop down stop times. Now I don't have that patch open. I've just got a blank patch at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is just try and recreate that and see if it works with this particular setup. Um, you also notice that this has bind to um, one, two, and three. So this, these have, well, I'm assuming these have scripting names here, S3. So and rather than using a inlet and an outlet to attach it to a parameter that we're going to be recording, it's using the bind, which specifies it by its scripting name, which is kind of handy and gets rid of patch cables. Anyway, so let's... um. Let's try and recreate this system here. So I'm going to go um, plug sync, which kind of reads information from the host, which in this case is Ableton Live. And you see we have a number of options here. So whether it's playing or not, so I could connect this up here, you'll see that Live is not currently playing. If I hit play here, turn off the metronome, and go back to our patch, you'll see that this is turned on. We have the current bar count, the current beat count, so if I was to connect this to a number, this is kind of moving along, and I'll, I'll be using this to record the start and the stop. I think for this video I'm just going to test one bar, maybe two bars, we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is the current ticks within a beat if we want to get finer resolution, and time signature, tempo, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first add a change object here, so a change object only outputs its inlet when it receives a change because this just con continuously outputs kind of, you know, one, 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 two, 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 three, three, like it, it pounds it and I don't want that. So I'm going to just um, add that change in there. So if I was to connect this to a bang, you see we're going to get a bang on every beat. So that's handy. But what I want is I just want to bang on uh, the first beat. So I'm going to go select one and put this here so each at the start of each bar we're going to get a bang and what i want to do is i want the bang to clear and then record and then after a bar i want it to then define length and stop and play i'm not sure if this is going to work but we'll, we'll check it out uh hmm I've just realized that, okay, so what I'm going to have to do here is put in a, we'll use a counter, 
Okay, so this is just going to sequentially bang this. And each time it receives a bang, it's going to go up an increment. So we can see that counter is moving along. So here I'm going to go select 1 and 2. Okay, because I, I want to have two separate instances of a bang. So let me put bangs here. Bangs all over the place. Um, I need to send this a message of set 0, so this resets the counter. So let's say I, I'll put a number box here as well, just so we can see where the counter is currently at. Okay, so we're at 20, so if I was to go set 0, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so this needs to be select 0 and 1. So this first bang, we're going to create multiple bangs. I just make a bunch of bangs just so I don't run out. Because I find if I run out, run out of bangs, when I add more at the end, sometimes it mucks up all of the sequence of which I wanted them to go. So on zero, this is this one here. On the first bang, we want it to... First we want it to clear. Then we want it to bang this, which is length zero record. Uh, in fact, yeah, okay, okay, this is good for now. Then the second bang, we want it to define length of the click and, cliff and stop, and then we want it to play it. So I feel like as soon as I click on the set zero here, and wait for one of these bangs. I've got one bar to move some parameters quickly. Let's try it. Okay. Let's go. Okay, that didn't seem to work. Do we get any errors? No, we didn't. Let's try this again. Do uh, do we get the zero when I click set zero? Yes. So it clears it, then it records it. Well, let's just try it again. So it should be recording now. Bang. Okay, so something's not right here. Uh, let me just let me just go stop, clear. Let's just see if this works without me. Um, using the, the time system. So that works okay. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this to select 3 just so I have um, more time. Okay, so let's try this again. So I'm going to go set 0. Maybe it's to do with the clear. So I'm going to go clear. Record. Move this around. Stop. Play. No, that seems to work as well. Okay, so what's going wrong here? Am I doing this in the wrong order? So it goes clear. So these move from right to left in their order. So I've got clear, boom. And then... I don't know, it should be working. I'll try it again. And then three... Okay, let's try clicking on play manually, see what happens. It doesn't seem to be recording my inputs when this is triggered by, by this. So why would that not be happening? I'm going to remove the clear and see if that, if that does anything. So let's go set zero again. Bang. Two three and then play I feel like I'm doing something stupid here okay I'll tell you what I'll do I'll get rid of this and I'll try and do it manually so I'm gonna go set zero record let's move this around oops and then three So 
So it seems like when I send a bang into this inlet here, it's not actually... Um, maybe it's because this is kind of a stacked message. So let's click on this. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to go print so we can print the output of this message box to the console. So when I click on print, so we get two messages coming in, link zero and record. But when I connect it to a bang, which is controlled by the counter, what happens? I mean, it does the same thing. It just doesn't seem to be retaining the information. I wonder if I need a defer low object in between this bang and this. I'm not sure if I do, but we'll give it a shot. Okay. Two and three. Ah, okay, that seemed to have worked. Okay, so it was just kind of a message priority issue there. Okay, but this seemed to have stopped. Play. One, two, three. Okay, maybe I need to add this. Um, maybe I need to add a defer low to the other objects. I'm going to guess I do. Um, Oh, also, I'm assuming this um, Metro constantly banging the MTR is a reason that we have the ability to record seamless loops. Okay, so let's get this defer low copied across. And we'll grab another one. Okay, is it zero? Recording. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's playing. Is it going to loop? It is. Okay, that's awesome. I'm going to turn on the metronome and go back to the patch. And let's just do this one more time. So this all looks in time to me. Okay, I think we've um, we've cracked a bit of a code here. I think what I'll do in the next video is I will change this so we can set different lengths of time to record. And then we will move this across to the DJ Megaset patch. Okay.